But surely climate change is happening. Do scientists have any doubt? Climate always changes. It always has and it always will, no matter what humans are doing. And based on the paleoclimatic data that I and others have collected, it's obvious that climate is and always has been variable. In fact, the only constant about climate is change. It changes continually. In a brochure sent to every household across the country, Environment Canada asserted that after 900 years of relatively constant temperature, the 20th century was suddenly warmer. The warmest in a millennium, they said. This was certainly different to what scientists had concluded before 1998. Past climate researchers have found out that over much of the world, between about 1400 and in some places as late as 1900, there was a period of colder than average temperatures over many regions of the world called the Little Ice Age. And before that, there was a period of unusual warmth. So warming and cooling are the norm. The 20th century is not out of bounds compared to the past. So that created a very familiar curve that appeared in the early IPCC reports. And then suddenly, in 1998, a study came out, which is now referred to as the MBH-98, because the three authors' names, the first one is the one that's spoken about the most, which is Mann, um, published a report in which they completely rejected that widely accepted temperature graph. The MBH-98 graph became known as the hockey stick curve where the shaft of the stick was the relatively constant lower temperatures for the first 900 years of the past millennium, and the blade of the stick, the reputed sudden temperature rise of the past century. Although man's research was never audited, the United Nations and environmentalists promoted it as the smoking gun that recent warming was unusual. Finally, in 2003, Canadian analyst Stephen McIntyre in cooperation with Ross McKittrick of the University of Guelph, decided to take a closer look at the data. We carried out an analysis of the results to see what happened when we uh, recompile, recompiled the data and got quite different answers. Instead of having a extraordinarily high 20th century, we had a 15th century value that was just as high as the 20th century. So the hockey stick disappeared. It's a computer programming error that yields these hockey sticks. This piece of the jigsaw puzzle needs to be removed before science can develop a proper understanding of the climate history of the last millennium. Here's a study that appeared in the uh, world's top science journal, and yet uh, years went by and they never noticed that the data uh, description that accompanied the paper was wrong, uh, that there were uh, very important methodological uh, issues that weren't described in the paper. Last year's Arctic Climate Impact Assessment made some very dramatic but highly unrealistic predictions. That the first graph to appear in the report is the hockey stick makes one naturally suspicious. So they made up what they were going to do beforehand and then chose whatever science they could find, which they thought might, might support it, that's my view. They had another scare a few years ago because one of the people from the IPCC went on an, an Arctic cruise, you see, and he was absolutely amazed to find there was open sea. And he, he put an article in the New York Times saying, you know, this proves global warming. He had failed to notice that the Northwest Passage was first negotiated by a man called Roald Amundsen in 1906. Recent research shows that 8,000 years ago, temperatures were 6 to 8 degrees higher in the Arctic than today, and that dramatic changes occurred in only a few decades. Nevertheless, polar bears and other Arctic wildlife obviously adapted and survived, and so are also not threatened today. About 5,000 years ago, the world was much warmer than it is today, and warmer even than their forecasting for the most extreme global warming forecasts. We frequently hear that the incidence and severity of extreme weather such things as hurricanes, blizzards, droughts, and floods are increasing and that global warming is the cause. 
As editor of Natural Hazards, a leading scientific journal in the field, Dr. Murty has reviewed hundreds of papers on the topic. Not a single manuscript out of these hundreds ever claimed global warming as the reason for extreme weather. Not a single one. I do not see any evidence of actual either numbers, that is the frequency or intensity of extreme weather events increasing. Similarly, extreme weather expert Dr. Madhav Kandekar demonstrates that such events are not on the rise in Canada. But what about the massive Quebec ice storm of 1998 that many people blame on climate change? There's nothing to say that it's humans that were responsible. And also we cannot say that in future we won't have that kind of ice storms. If all those meteorological conditions Will, will fall in line again, we will have a severe ice storm of, the, uh, of that magnitude, if not even bigger. The argument is that we're going to have an increase of drought, and uh, it's, it's another part of the scare tactics, that, well, more severe weather, more droughts, and so on. Uh, when you look at the long-term record, what you see is that droughts are cyclical. Uh, they do alternate, and, but you also see there are far worse droughts in the past than, than uh, we've had in the, in the modern record.